Hi, I'm Simon and welcome to the second part of the vlog and this is where I'm going to be talking about the games, well the few games that I've picked up recently and more importantly the ones that I've been playing. Now I said to you in a previous video that what I've been trying to do is kind of work back through the games that I bought a while ago that I started that I didn't finish and also starting those games that haven't even been put in the machine yet. Now the first of these is something that I've been meaning to play for quite some while. Um, I started playing the beginning of it a few months ago. I'd heard a lot of good things about it and that's why I picked it up. Surprisingly it's a movie tie-in and normally those are, those are rubbish but this one is a pretty good first person experience. So check out this little clip. So that's the Chronicles of Riddick, the assault on Dark Athena, or at least it's the Butcher Bay section of the game. What's really good about this game is that it has the original uh, PlayStation and, no, PlayStation 2 was it? And definitely Xbox title on there, remastered using the graphics engine of the new Dark Athena game. Or the, I say new, it's been out for quite a few years. But anyway, I'd heard a lot of good reviews and decided to pick up that game. I think it was a a bargain price of about four or five pounds. And my initial plan was to play through the Butcher Bay game and then tackle the Dark Athena at, at some other point. Um, this was a few months ago when I started it. I didn't get that far. I picked it up again recently, played through a bit more of it and, you know, really enjoyed it. There's a lot, there's a lot going for the game. I particularly like the perspective within the game. It's first person, but there's something about just this slight curving of your field of view that really makes it feel like you're behind the eyes of the avatar, and I like that a lot. Admittedly, the world is a bit grey and drab, but it's set within a prison, so what are you going to do? Um, there's enough within the story to keep you, keep you playing for a while, but I must admit I have been distracted by other games and it's gone back on the shelf and I haven't continued to the point of beating the Butcher Bay section. Now, I spoke briefly in the last video, or the last section of the video, about Day Z, or Day, no, not Day Z, not that name, Days, yes, Days. And although I haven't played it, it did inspire me to pick up something that I've been playing, or that I've played a couple of times before and it's got to be my favourite zombie themed game and that's this one Yes, that's Dead Rising on the Xbox 360, without a doubt my favourite zombie themed game and it's one I keep coming back to again and again, or at least I say again and again because that's really only the third time I've properly played through the whole game. But what's great about it is all three of those experiences have been different. 
There are so many choices to make within the game and so many people to save um, or not save. That's your choice. Um, but if you, you try to save all of them, I think it's impossible to save everyone. So it warrants going back and doing different missions and rescuing different people and seeing how the game plays out. Because I think there are 10 or 12 different endings to it and each of the three times I've played through it, I've seen a different ending and experienced the game differently. Uh, and I know it's, it's buggy and it's not perfect and it's one of those games that I hope way in the future, sort of 10 years time from now, is considered enough of a classic that Capcom go back and remaster it and um, tweak it just a little bit to make it perfect. But as it stands, I still love playing through that game. And I guess I should say thanks to, uh, to Jurassic Junkie for putting up his videos, getting me interested in, in days. And um, yeah, that, uh, that drove me to play through that game one more time. Now, I've also got to thank somebody else. Um, I mentioned him in the last part of the video, and that was Doma from Doma's Cool Stuff, because one of the moves that he showed in his response video was a move from Virtua Fighter 4. And I realized that I'd got the game, I'd picked it up from, I think, uh, what's the game station? They were having a sale and it was 49p. Um, I picked it up a few months ago, but didn't really play through it. But since then I've had a bit of a play through. So just, just check this out and have a look. it's a pretty cool title and as I'd mentioned previously the uh, component cable for the uh, for, well actually I've got a cable that can plug into the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3, the Xbox 360 and the Wii which I, I use it to swap between the different machines and um, yeah, it's, it's very handy for, for recording I just have it the component plugged into my Horporg PVR and then just switch, switch the cable between the different machines. Um, and it's very cool. And I hadn't, until I got that cable, used the PlayStation 2 with component, but it's very, very nice. The picture quality almost makes it look like a new system. And I know graphics are not that important, but it is very nice and quite exciting to see the PlayStation 2 looking so sharp. And going back and playing Virtua Fighter 4 um, and uh, a few other games that I've, I've put through. I mean, I'm not going to talk about all of them that I've been playing. But yeah, um, playing Virtua Fighter 4 properly this time rather than just shoving in the disc in to check that it worked like I did when I bought it. It's really, really very cool. And the move that, that Dorma showed is, uh, is quite cool. And I, I think that... That character, the Shaolin monk character, is now is now my favourite in the game. So I'm looking forward to playing that f a bit more, learning the Virtua Fighter system, and um, I'm probably going to get the the Virtua Fighter Five Final Showdown. Although it's still it's just it's download only. That's that's the thing that's kept me from from getting it. But I would really like to get that. So I'm toying with that idea in the future. Now I have been playing also another fighting game, something that I bought a little while ago. I played through it a little bit when I first got it and realized that I'll probably get addicted to it if I, if I uh, allow myself to play it too much. And that's this one. Body shot. Just about one minute remains in the first round. Oh, beautiful hook. He got hit with a big uppercut there, Mike. Joe, we gotta be careful. Oh, big right hand. Oh, 
Oh, he got hurt. He's down. Oh, he recovers. Oh, he's back to his feet. Oh, big elbow. It is all over. Oh, right. Knockout victory. How good was that? Yeah, look at this timing. Perfect accuracy, perfect position. Let's see it one more time. He just nails him with that. That's a highlight reel knockout right there, Joe. And that's UFC 2010. And I've spoken a little bit about the UFC 2009 uh, in a previous video, and I traded that in and got the 2010 version. And I'm really enjoying it. Um, I've played through it a bit more, taken the career mode uh, a bit further. It's it's a lot harder. The career mode is a lot harder than the 2009 one, which is which is a welcome change because I found in the previous one when I got my character up to a certain stat level, he just pummeled everyone, and and it was just a breeze. Whereas this this is a lot more difficult. There are a lot more options, a lot more kind of training choices and the choices of moves as well and I do really enjoy it the only thing is there's a lot of ground fighting and I don't like that side of it and I don't know maybe one of you guys can tell me is there a game that plays like this but it's just stand up um, fighting kind of kickboxing rather than having the whole wrestling element I mean I know I'm not criticizing wrestling because I'm sure there are a lot of guys who love that element of the UFC game but for me as soon as those fights go to the ground, I'm not really interested in it. I don't like it as much. Um, but I create the characters that I've got in it in um, career mode, a kind of boxer, kickboxer style characters, and I really like that, that element of it. So I'm, I enjoy it. I've played it a bit more, but I'm still looking for that style of realistic fighting game that has more of a kickboxing uh, style to it. So uh, hopefully I'll find something like that. Maybe you'll be able to tell me about that. So that's it for, for kind of fighting titles. But another thing I picked off the shelf that I thought to myself, oh, it's been on there for so long. It was, I think, one of the first games I got on the Xbox 360. And I think it's something that really needs to be completed. It's a fan favorite and it's this one. <laughs> Yes, Halo 3. I know a lot of people are massive fans of the Halo series, and I like them, but after Halo 1, my interest in the series just kind of waned. I think the problem for me is I played Halo 1 just before Halo 2 came out, and as soon as I'd finished Halo 1, I went straight into playing Halo 2 and got about halfway through it and got kind of bored of the series. It's like I'd had too much Halo and I haven't really got back into it since then. I did go on to complete Halo 2 and I do want to get to the end of Halo 3 but there's just not really a burning desire to do it. Um, I do I do appreciate what a good game it is but there's, I, my heart's not in it so I'm sure that will just sit back on the shelf and I'll probably pick it up in another year's time and play a little bit more of it but yeah, who knows when I'm going to get to the end of Halo 3 and I don't have any burning desire to, to play Halo 4 when it comes out. So for me, there's there's no real rush for uh, to complete Halo 3. So I kind of put the Xbox 360 aside after that for a little while and the other consoles and moved on to the Mac. I thought, well, I'll do a little bit of gaming on the Mac, give it a go. Um, and... Well, it all came about really because I'd seen, I kind of stumbled across a review for a game and it was a PC title and I thought to myself, well, that's something that's been out for a little while. 
I'm sure it's available on the Mac as well. I'll go and check out Steam. I bet it will be cheap. I'll, I'll download it. And that game was From Dust. And it's a title that was created by the creator of Out of This World, or uh, Another World as it's known here in the UK. And that was a game that I loved playing on the Amiga. Um, and I just kind of noticed that this game was by that creator and it kind of brought memories back of Another World. And I think it's, yeah, Another World's been playing a lot on my mind recently because of that that game that I spoke about in my last video that's kind of stuck in the back of my head and I don't know what it is. But anyway, so I got back into some Mac gaming. Unfortunately, From Dust is not available on the Mac, but I bought it anyway because Steam were having a summer sale and ridiculous, ridiculously cheap prices and I just couldn't resist myself. There was 75% off that From Dust game, so it was a, a couple of pounds. And then I saw a few other things that were crazy prices that I've wanted to buy for a while. Um, one of those was this. This next test applies the principles of momentum to movement through portals. If the laws of physics no longer apply in the future, God help you. If you are a non-employee who has discovered this facility amid the ruins of civilization, welcome. And remember, testing is the future, and the future starts with you. Ah, uh, the hilarious Portal 2. I absolutely loved Portal. I thought it was a fantastic title, and I can't believe it took me so long uh, to get around to playing it. Um, I didn't pick up the, the orange box until quite a while after it was released, and after lots of people were talking about how great Portal was, and even when I got it, I didn't play Portal straight away. I, I tucked into uh, Team Fortress 2, and because that was the real reason for me getting, uh, getting the orange box. But Portal is, as far as I'm concerned, the best thing on that on that compilation of games. And Portal 2, from what I can tell, because to be honest, I haven't played a lot of it yet, because there are a lot of other games that I need to play through but it's, it's very cool. It's very cool. And so I've enjoyed what I've played of Portal 2 so far. I'm really looking forward to getting, getting into it and playing it in a bit more depth at a, at a later date. But there were other titles in the Steam sale that I just couldn't keep my hands off. And uh, one of those purchases was, um, well, it's actually two games, two games that I haven't owned well, actually, no, the first of them I have just recently bought on the Xbox 360. But I thought to myself, well, why not get them on Steam? Because I can play them on my Mac and I can play them on my PC if I want, which is the one of the great things about the Steam service is once you own the game, you can download it on either system and you don't have to pay any more money. And so that game is this one. Ah oh, yes, the fantastic FPS zombie game, Left 4 Dead. 
and I also picked up Left 4 Dead 2 but I haven't installed or played that yet. But the original Left 4 Dead, I played through the first couple of sections on it and I must say I really do enjoy it. Um, it's got, there's something about it, the very intense experience that it has to offer where, oh, especially when those fat, slimy, bloated things explode, spraying their bile all over you and you can't see what's going on. And then that haunting music, oh, and, oh, and then the zombies swarm you and oh, you have to fight them off. It's really quite, quite intense. And if you're in the dark and you've got your headphones on and yeah, there aren't many other experiences in in games that are quite as kind of creepy and uh, unsettling as, as that can be. No, not quite in that way. Well, not that I've experienced. I'm sure there are plenty of equally good and scary experiences, but I haven't had them yet. So I'm very much enjoying picking that up from time to time and coming back to it. Um, I'm sure once I've played through all of, uh, of Left 4 Dead 1, Left 4 Dead 2 will be played through next. Um, but that wasn't it for the Steam sale. There were a couple of other ones that I've picked up um, but haven't really played through yet. One of those was uh, The Witcher, which I've heard lots of good things about, but uh, it was only £1.74. And I know it's just going to sit in the account for a while and not be played, but I want to get to that at some point. Also, Super Meat Boy, another game uh, that uh, I've heard a lot of good things about. I've actually played the demo of it, really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, as yet haven't installed it um, to play it, but yeah, again, it will be played. Uh, and another one that caught my eye that, again, I haven't played, but want to at some point, is a, what I believe is a point-and-click adventure called uh, Botanicula, I think it's called. Um, I saw the, the little demo video for it and was kind of captivated by the, the cute and bizarre graphics. And again, it was a pound or two pounds, something like that, and I thought, well, why not, why not, I'll play that. So I think that was, yeah, that was it for the for the Steam, st Steam sale, but I've kind of stuck with Steam a little bit and have been playing a bit of this. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, what the hell is that? Well, that's actually a modification of Counter-Strike Source using Simpsons characters. It seems completely ridiculous, but it's really good fun because it's not quite like, well, it's not at all like Counter-Strike because you, you respawn as soon as you die. It's basically the gun game where you start off with a, with a weaker weapon and the more kills you get, the better, better weapon you get until um, the person with the final weapon makes a kill and they they win the round. Um, it's something that I think is proving quite popular in, in um, uh, other FPS games. Um, I think uh, Call of Duty have got a version of that game. Um, and it's really cool. It's really, really good fun. Uh, it's not something that I play for an extended period, but a few rounds of it. Um, just to, to break up the monotony of, uh, of the day. <laughs> well, not the day, I'm working in the day or in the evenings. It, it's really quite cool. So if you've got Counter-Strike Source, I'd, I'd recommend going and checking out some of the servers that have got the Simpsons gun game for a, a little bit of FPS fun. Okay, now that does kind of bring me to the end of my, my Steam experience of recent. But I've then gone back and felt Okay, it was kind of after playing Counter-Strike Source again. I wanted to play a bit more FPS. Um, and I've <laughs> I've cancelled, I cancelled a few months ago, my Xbox Live account. And of course, that makes all of your Xbox Live games redundant. You know, even though 
I've got an account technically, I've got a silver account, I can't play any of the games online, which is a total cheek, but I just felt sick of giving them money for what I feel should be a free service. It should be, you pay for an online game, you should be able to pay, play it for free. I don't mind if there's extra content that you can pay for, that's fine. Um, I much prefer the offering that that Sony has, where you can play the games for free, and then if you want a, an extra service where they actually give you decent things for your money, then you can pay your five pounds a month or whatever it is for it. I don't pay five pounds a month for it, I just play my games for free and I like that. But it occurred to me that I don't really have any decent FPS games on the PlayStation 3. And so I thought, well, I really like Modern Warfare 2, so why don't I just go out and find a copy of that? I'm sure I could get it for five quid somewhere and I can have a bit of a PlayStation 3 FPS fix. Well, as it turned out, I went out to get PlayStation, to get, a, get ugh. <laughs> I went out to get Modern Warfare 2 on the PlayStation 3 and I came back with this. But that is Modern Warfare 2, some of you might be thinking. And, well, you could be forgiven for that mistake because it does look very similar. It's actually Modern Warfare 3. Now, I did go to a shop and I did find Modern Warfare 2 for £5. It just so happened in the same shop they had Modern Warfare 3 for £15. And I thought to myself, mm, shall I get it? I mean, if I've got Modern Warfare 2, do I really need to get Modern Warfare 3? But, as it turned out, I'm glad I did. Because I don't really know to say for sure whether it is a better game. It's very similar. I do like some of the, the tweaks they've made to it. Um, I do enjoy it just as much. But the reason I'm really glad I did get it is because I put in Modern Warfare 2 first and thought, well, I'm really familiar with this. I'll play a few multiplayer games on this and then I'll use Modern Warfare 3 and play through the single player campaign because I, I normally like to do that before I get into the multiplayer. But Modern Warfare 2 on the PlayStation 3 just sucked. Server after server after server or person's machine after person's machine that I was connecting to was hacked. There were loads of people cheating on it and I was like, oh God, it just, just ruined the game. I, was really frustrated with it and it actually seems like a bit of a waste of five pounds now because I've already got it on the PlayStation 3 and if I can't play, sorry I've already got it on the Xbox 360 and if I can't play through the multiplayer on it then it's no difference to the Xbox 360 version but anyway I've got it I couldn't be bothered to take it back. But Modern Warfare 3 is good fun but I have plugged a lot of hours into it you know Night after night, it's been stealing an hour or two. I keep, you know, or for a while. It's not the most recent game I've been playing because there have been a couple of other things more recently than that. But for for a, a good couple of weeks or more, it's like every night I felt like a mm, bit more Modern Warfare. Why not? Why not? I'll forget about playing something else and play a bit more Modern Warfare because it is, it is, it is good fun. I mean. I'm sure not all of you like FPS games and you might you might hate it, but as far as that genre goes, I do I do enjoy a bit of Call of Duty. I mean, right, some of the people you get to play against can be quite irritating and I do have to flick that mute button on for, uh, for most of the matches that I play because there's normally at least one 10-year-old child squeaking through his mic or playing music through... Oh, just make this... Anyway, I can't expect everyone to be civilised and play the game like I do. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting title. So, And I'm actually looking forward to Black Ops 2. 
Black Ops is my favourite of the Call of Duty games, and so, and I'm really intrigued by what Black Ops 2 is offering. So, I think that could be, could be a release day purchase. At least it's one of those games where I know if I spend £30 on it or £35, I'll get my money's worth. So, yeah, looking forward to that one. Okay, so I had my FPS fix. Um, and then, well, then I moved on to something else because after playing an FPS for a while, I felt I wanted a game with a bit more depth. And I saw one of Interghost's fantastic one minute videos and I thought, oh, I've got that game, I've had it for ages, I've got to play it. And it's this one. Will you just Ah oh, yes, the fantastic Fallout 3. Now this is a game that I wish I'd got into and played it as soon as I'd as soon as I got it because it's definitely right up my street. It's kind of got first person shooter elements although the gunplay is not as slick if you use just the uh the pure um FPS interface. I mean it does have its VATS system, which is its uh, targeting system based on the amount of action points you've got stored up. And you can select which parts of the enemy you want to shoot at and let the game play it out itself. Um, but oh, I just I love the the open world, the missions, um, some of the characters. I mean, not all of the characters. Some of the characters are like cardboard cutouts, but. Uh, there's a lot of interesting characters to bump into along the way. Some fun little side missions to do and um, quite an interesting quest. But I guess ultimately it's the world that you're thrown into that uh, is the thing that really draws me to it. This desolate landscape, this post-apocalyptic future and um, yeah, the kind of world that it suggests. Um, is not one that I'd like to live in, uh, don't get me wrong, um, I'm not saying this is in any way the kind of lifestyle that I'd like to live, but as an adventure to be experienced uh, through a video game is one that's really attracted me and um, I'm glad, firstly, that I bought it and secondly, that Interghost made that video and um, it definitely inspired me to take the game down off the shelf and finally start playing it um, and I'd heartily recommend it to anyone. I mean it's one that you can see in, well at least in the UK, in pretty much any game shop for £5 and in fact I picked up, I don't know if I showed this in a, in a previous video, but on um, thatsentertainment.co.uk I picked up a copy of Fallout New Vegas for £2.99 on the PlayStation 3 and I also at the same time I got Brotherhood, is it Brotherhood? Yeah, Revelations is the newer one, yeah. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood on the Xbox 360, also for £2.99, um, neither of which I played as yet, so I'm not going to talk about them because I've got nothing to show you. But, um, but yeah, so I've got Fallout New Vegas to play at some point in the future once I've, once I've worked my way through Fallout 3, and I imagine it's going to be quite a lengthy game, although I have put quite a bit into it so far. In fact, I might go and play a bit of it now because I've pretty much covered all the gaming that I've been doing over the last couple of months. Um, there have been little other bits here and there, but those are the games that have been occupying serious chunks of my time. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've uh, taken some enjoyment uh, out of this and hopefully you've uh, maybe seen a couple of games that you haven't played before or ones that you, you know, you've known about, but um, Maybe I've hopefully inspired you to try a couple of these games that you haven't played as yet. So, as I said, thank you very much for watching. From my spare room to wherever you are, this is Simon signing off. Bye-bye.